building three end-to-end Gen AI apps, not talking about MVPs, but apps in production in less than 30 minutes, almost sounds impossible, right? Google AI Studio completely facelifted its wide coding experience. And in this video, I'm going to put that to test. Some of the apps that we're going to build together are going to be medium to high level complexity. I'm going to build three apps with you. The first one will be an AI video assistant that actually creates B-rolls of you for your scripts. The second one will be an AI trip planner using the brand new Google Maps grounding in Gemini. And the third one would be a live landing page for a YouTube channel. You're not going to believe how fast we can do this once we are in the Google AI Studio. Let's get into it. So I'm in the new fully changed Google AI Studio experience and you can see that there are three different options here and you can get into each one of these. So I recently did a video where I talked about all of these different options, but this video I'm going to focus specifically on the vibe coding aspect. So I'm going to click on this, which is more around a developer experience to build apps. Okay. So once you click on here, you're greeted with something like this, where just like any other vibe coding tool, you can describe your idea in plain English and you can also go ahead and select different types of models and then also provide system instruction. You can also select whether you want Angular or React. Angular is something which Google uses a lot in all of their applications, but React is something which is also used across the industry. So you could go ahead and select any one of these. And if you're building an application which requires your mic, then you have the capability to select a mic for you to provide voice inputs, right? So here you see the mic for it to understand your text. You can do that as well. Now, before you actually type your idea, these are some of the recommendations that Google AI Studio is providing you already, right? If your app, whatever app you're building, if you need to have photo editing capabilities in your app, then you can select this. If you want to have conversation capabilities, then you can select this. And you can see there are a lot of different options which are available. For example, if you're uploading something and you want to have a transcribed audio, or if you want to have like a translation where you need to require the audio to be transcribed first, you can select that as well, right? So these are all the options that they've done a tremendous job in providing upfront so that it gives you a hint on the kind of functionalities your app can have right from the get-go, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to enter a simple prompt for the first app that we're going to build. So the first app is a B-roll generator based on a YouTube video script or any kind of script that you want to provide, right? So I want it to take my image or a user's image, upload that and use like a Nano Banana to edit that image and then use way of 3.1 to create a B-roll based on the overall script that I would provide. So it's a it's an interesting one because what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask like multiple different models for them to work together. So a cool idea that I, I generally use is I generally ask to brainstorm first. So here is it, I'm saying this, I want you to brainstorm with me first. Do not create an app yet. I'm thinking of creating an app that generates appropriate B-roll for uploaded script. Users will be able to upload their own image, which the app will then use Nano Banana to create contextual visuals. Subsequently, Veo 3.1 will be utilized to generate B-rolls, right? I also want the app to be able to clearly explain to me the logic why that B-roll is appropriate. And then once I as a user select, then only it, it should generate the video, right? I want, I'm want i making sure that I'm giving this multiple times that do not generate the app yet. Just brainstorm with me first, right? So this gives me an idea of what the app could look like. And then this is the coolest feature that the new update of Google AI Studio has brought, which is they already, as soon as you provide the prompt, they already are suggesting the different kind of things that you can do, right? So here you can, they're suggesting that, okay, you can ask the user to enable a specific visual style for the B-roll. You can prefer like Angular and stuff like that. So all of these things you can, you can go ahead and add. So let's focus on this first. This is exactly what we asked, right? And it's saying, okay, this is an excellent app idea with a lot of potential. Let's break it down. I will act as your technical co-founder. So this is fantastic, right? So the suggestion is like an AI B-roll generator. This will be the project scope and stuff like that. And this is what I would do. It is going to do exactly that. And it is going to explain all of these things to me. So you can see that it is it's giving our th its thoughts and suggestions. It is the flow is something like this, where someone will upload their character. Then th they will analyze the script based on the, the script that is being uploaded. And then there will be a lot of suggestions that will be given. And then I, as a user, will review the suggestion and then finally up generate the video. So that is the cool thing that, that it would do. And then this will be the prompt that I could go ahead and give, give to the AI builder. For the moment, I'm going to go ahead and say that, okay, proceed with creation of the app. Okay. So now it's going to go ahead and create, create the app. But if I wanted to copy paste and use this, I could have started something new and would have given something like this, right? 
but for the moment it's already has this so it has understood and it likes the idea so i'm gonna ask it to do this now here is where it will start coding and you can see how quickly it is doing it one another cool idea that you could do is you can actually ask it to create like a readme file for yourself right so you could include that as part of the part of the requirements and then once you're done with that it should be able to create that for you so readme file and maybe like an architecture file if you include that as part of the prompt then it will create that overall file as part of the file explorer all right so our app is ready to roll and you can see it has done a fantastic job in just one go it's really pretty but we know that it's going to use real 3.1 which is only api enabled so instead of providing apis what i can do is i can actually like just switch to api key over here and this is where it will ask you to select your project so you can import your projects from directly from your google cloud whatever projects you have created and then you select here and if you have already created a key then you can all the keys will be shown here or you can actually go ahead and create a new key and then you can also create a new project as well as associate that new key with an existing project the only caveat is the project should be billing enabled so that whatever expenses you're incurring because of the video creation are associated with this right so i'm gonna use that particular project in order to create that all right, so let's now look into what this beautiful app is going to do for us, right? It, this is the user journey where you provide the script and it will provide the script analysis and it will create like a custom scene. And then based on your selection, it is going to create a custom video for you. So let's click on get started. The first thing it asks us is to upload the script. What I did was I actually I created this script for us, which is exactly the video that we are doing, right? So this is where the title of the video could be like, I built a pro AI video app with Gemini. This, and then we talked about this, right? So I'm going to upload this. I'm going to download this as a, like a text file. And then I'm going to go back and upload it over here. So I'm going to just do that right now in front of you. And then I'm going to upload my own image here because that is what we want, right? We want it to create visuals where I am in the visuals and in the B-rolls for my larger YouTube video, which you will also see as the output of this entire video production, right? So that's what I'm going to do. It's analyzing this and then very quickly, it's going to provide those different scenes, right? So you can see it is already starting to generate preview. So it just completed the, the generation and you can see that it has done some wonderful job where it has placed me in, in all of these different scenes. So you can see that here, here it has created like a digital architect and it also explains why this makes sense, right? So the scene visually represents the core concept of the script, building a sophisticated application with ease and speed. It serves as a powerful metaphor for lines like the, this is the future of building, etc. right? So it clearly is seeing, and then here it's talking about one-click ripple effect, right? You can see that it has done like a really good job. And here it is talking about like the multimodal, multimodal orchestra. So where we, I talked about Nano Banana, I talked about Wayo 3.1, etc, etc. So let me just go ahead and click on this and ask it to generate the b-roll because that's the one which i liked and then of course i can go ahead and create multiple b-rolls that i could then go ahead and use as part of my video which the overall video to stitch it together right so that is what we're going to see now now this is going to be using wayo 3.1 model which is the latest video generation model which google made available as part of ai studio in order to create this b-roll video so you're seeing all different models coming together you're seeing gemini 2.5 pro you're seeing the nano banana model which is the which is the image generation model and now you're seeing in action the wayo 3.1 model come all coming together to create this entire ui and web application okay so we'll give it a second till it generates the video it's going to be an eight second video all right so it has created the video let's check it out all right so that's fantastic. As I mentioned, I'm going to be using this as a B-roll. So it's not going to be the main part of the video, but if I could create multiple B-rolls like this, then it makes a lot of sense, right? And I can strategically insert it in places where I want. And that really helps me enhance the end user experience, which is you guys, when you're watching the videos and not just looking at me all the time, right? So that was just the first video. I want to show you some other videos that I also generated. So here you go. That's another one. And then I also generated this one. So I'm going to show this as well. <laughs> I don't know why I did this, but it's interesting, right? It's based on all of these, it has created these videos. So I'm going to, I'm going to stitch it together for you guys to check it out later. 
but that was our application number one. We'll cover how this can be deployed to production as part of the third app, so please stay tuned. All right, moving to the second application. Now, this one is where I want to showcase the latest update from, from Google and Google AI Studio, which is grounding Google Maps platform data within Gemini. So the coolest way to show this is to actually build a user application where you could potentially design like a, a day trip or some sort of a planner where the user can specify a city and then the answer of Gemini could be shown in a map, right? So here's the prompt that I'm going to give. Build an AI-powered trip planning application. Its core purpose is to take a simple and a natural language request from a user and instantly generate a complete map-based itinerary that can be refined through a conversational chat interface. The app is built around the integration of Google's Gemini and Google Map API. Make sure that I'm asking you to tell me upfront that, you know, what APIs, et cetera, are required, right? So that just in case, if the tool is not able to understand it, I want to make sure that, that I get that input directly from Google AI Studio, right? Again, it's doing the same thing where it is giving you some amazing suggestions upfront. So you can go ahead and add these suggestions as well. And then you could allow it to have like offline map access. As you see that I'm able to add these suggestions so once it has built something preliminary, then I'm able to also update the map or update the app with all of these amazing suggestions, right? So it's thinking already and going ahead and starting to implement those things. And I've asked it to tell me upfront, like what kind of APIs access does it require for, to ensure that the application runs successfully. So we'll, we'll give it some time to come back and provide us some result and it has already done its job. Then it has started writing the code and it is, it is already building the application, which is pretty cool. So let's see what it comes back with in a few seconds and, and then we'll come back and look at the app. All right, so it has done its job and it is asking me to provide the location and it is asking me to provide the Google Maps API key, right? So this is a must that you need to do in order for this to run. So let me show you guys how you can get this, right? So for you to do this, you need to go to your Google Cloud platform. So, you know, once you are in the Google Cloud console, just search for Google Maps. And then here you can see that Google Maps platform would show up. And then once you're here, you can see that these are all the APIs that are available as part of the GMP or Google Maps platform. And you need to enable some of these APIs for you, right? So for example, Maps Dataset API and all of these APIs are directly available as part of Google Cloud Platform. So Places Aggregate API, Places API Neo, Geocoding API, Geolocation API. So see that most of the APIs are enabled. And then once you're done with this, then you go to key, Keys and Credentials. And this is where you will, you have the capability to create a new credential altogether. You click on it, create a new API key, and then it is doing that in front of us. So it's going to create a new API key and this kind of goes ahead and becomes part of this. So you have this API key now. And what you also need to do is make sure that the API is not restricted because that is another error that can happen. And then you allow this, so don't restrict the key. So there's no restriction here. And then you basically copy paste the key. And then once you have that key, then you go back to your application over here. And then as part of the application, you search for the API key, which will be part of the apps.txt and then replace that API key for, for you, right? So once, once you're done with this, you rerun the application and then you should be fine. All right, so we have built the app and it asks for, for the current geographic location. So I'm going to just allow that. And then if you look at this, it's, it's taking the location because I just permitted it. And once you're done with that, then it's going to ask for the user input. So now he's saying that, okay, tell me your dream trip. So I'm going to say that, okay, plan two day trip to Chicago. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to do that. And then what you're really looking at here is the latest update from AI Studio where Gemini 2.5 Pro is now grounded with the Google Maps platform data, right? So whatever answers it is generating, it is actually like collecting it not only from Google search, but also from the directly from the Google Pla Maps platform. So if I click on this, it's going to help me figure that out. If I click on this, it's showing that in the map. So I was able to build like an interactive map here and I'm able to show you that. And at any point in time, I can actually look into a street view of wherever we are going. So it's pretty cool, right? So what you're able to see here. This is something which is now possible that Gemini is giving you answers directly linked to Google Maps data. So for instance, if you want to like only go into places which have five star or four star and above reviews, you can actually ask that question to it, right? So that's, that, that is like pretty cool. Now we'll cover how this can be deployed to production as part of the third app. So please stay tuned. So this was app number two. Now let's get into the app number three. Okay, so the last app that we will build is going to be a landing page for 
generating leads for my YouTube channel. And this is something which I will actually deploy in production and show it to you guys. I'm back here and I'm going to ask a give a prompt like this, create a modern single page landing page for a YouTube channel, which is this that teaches Gen AI and Agent AI and stuff like this. It should include like a hero section with a headline and an email sign up form for a newsletter. And then it should have an embedded feature for a YouTube video, right? So I'm just gonna give it, give a command like this and I'm gonna ask it to just run. Again, as always, now it's giving all of these interesting, interesting ideas, like call to action for latest videos, build your own favorite framework, which is selecting between React and, and, the, and Angular. So all of these things are something which which it does a great job in providing the recommendation, right? So it's doing that. Just thought for 23 seconds and it is already off to the races because this one is like mostly simple. It's just creating a landing page and then providing a place for you to embed a YouTube video, right? So it should be able to do that pretty quickly. And as you can see, it does a really great job as a developer would do in order to create something like this. So we'll give it a few more seconds for it to generate something end to end, and then we will come back and then see the final output. All right, so here we are, it has done its job and let's look at the preview and this is where it has generated this. It was able to provide an embedded URL for my YouTube video and here you can see that it has done a fantastic job in creating this particular landing page. So it's pretty simple. All I wanted was to have something like this where I'm saying that, okay, join this. We can see some of the things are pretty cool here, like the mouse has some effect on how I'm moving and then like you, you can go ahead and create this. Once I type this, then it, it is going to take me to the YouTube channels. And then if I click on this, then it basically takes me from here to my, to the YouTube channel, right? So it directly goes here. So <laughs> that's the idea. And then it might ask for me to subscribe. So that is what I really wanted. Coming back here, the thing that I wanted to show you was once you're satisfied with this, then you have the option to directly deploy this app in Google Cloud, in, in their Cloud Run service. So for that, what you really need to do is you need to select the project which has like a billing requirement. So it is going to select, it's going to check for that. So in this case, I have like this particular project which does not have a billing. So it is going to ask me to set up a billing, but I have a billing set up for this particular project. So it's going to, it's going to allow you to do that. Or I can go ahead and select this one, which is where you should be able to deploy. So once you're done, you can click on the deploy button. So I've already done that. And that's why it's giving me a redeploy option. But if I click on this, then here is the here is the landing page which is on the app. Now, what you would want to do is basically have this app land to your specific domain ID. And that's where what you can do is you can, if let's say you are on GoDaddy, right? So you can go to your different products. So let's say that I do that and then I come to the AI learning circle. And then within that, let's say that I click on this and then I go to the AI learning circle and then click on DNS. And that's where you have the capability to can go ahead and provide the, the DNS records, right? So th these are the records that you will get. Now, these records you will actually get from your Google Cloud. So if I go to Google Cloud Run, if I come here, because I've deployed this in my Google Cloud, you can see that this is already here. So if I click on this, then I will have this. It seems that there is some error here, but for the moment I can click on the domain mapping. And here is where if you click on the ad mapping, it's going to generate the domains for you. So I can specify this, that I want to do this. And if I want to have a specific subdomain, and then if I click on continue, then it's going to give me like the DNS records that I can use from here and then go to GoDaddy and then basically update these DNS records to show up over there. So that that's the simplest way for you to be able to get to your like domain from GoDaddy or anywhere, like all of these uh, services and then point it so that it doesn't look like a weird ID. So that's what I wanted to show as well. All right. I hope this was helpful. I just took you through three different applications that I was able to create in a very short amount of time. And I also showed you how to actually deploy this in full production. You will have the link to my website, which is ailearningcircle.com, which is actually in production. And I completely built this using Google AI Studio. And then you also saw the domain address, which was on GoDaddy. So you can absolutely do this. This is real and you will be able to deploy production ready Gen AI, Gen AI applications end to end with this. If you have any questions about any of the things that I discussed, please let me know in the comment section. I'll be very happy to provide responses. I hope this video was helpful and added value to your knowledge base. If you liked it, please do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and also share it with your friends. It helps me a lot. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.